What's up guys, my name is Suman and welcome to Purple Pie Studios. So this is the lesson 14 of the Corporate Explainer Animation course and in this lesson, we will learn three different transition techniques that can transform your explainer videos or any other animation projects and motion design projects. And if you have missed the previous lessons of this course where we have learned how to animate these three animated sequence, then you can check it out from the playlist link that is provided in the description. And you can get all the files, assets, and illustrations that we are using throughout this course from our website that is also linked in the description. And also you can get it from the pinned comment section. So that being said, let's dive right into Adobe After Effects and let's get started with transition technique 1, zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so we are in After Effects and we will start the animation from where we have left in lesson 13. So here first we will animate the zoom in animation when the door is opening with the door opening animation the frame will also zoom in and the camera will enter the room so we will start the zoom in animation from where the door almost starts opening from somewhere around here now here we have the frame one uh, which is the left door frame so inside this we have we just have the door opening animation and the background uh, is cut out because uh, we have used a mat layer for the door this one as an alpha inverted mat that is why you can even see the area behind this frame so let's unsolo it and let's start the zoom in animation from here but first we will add a null object so let's add this one and let's name this camera and i will simply parent both these frames with the camera layer Let's open the scale property, add a keyframe. Let's open the position property and add a keyframe. Press E to open the properties with keyframe. And also, uh, I would also add a keyframe on the scale and the position property of frame two as well. So press U to open the properties with keyframe again. Okay, now it's time to zoom in. So it is not going to be too fast or maybe too slow. It is going to let's give the zoom in transition for about three seconds so we are at five seconds so from here let's jump on to the eighth second now we will scale it up also we need to add a position and scale keyframe on the frame one as well so let's add keyframes and just scale up the null object so that uh, we can properly see this frame. And now we are even going to scale up the frame one. And let's move the camera layer or the null object uh, slightly in the Y axis and slightly shift it so that it's properly aligned with the composition window. Okay, let's slightly zoom out. So we have to fit in the scene in the frame or in the composition window such a way that everything is looking perfect, perfectly aligned. Also scale up the frame too as well by a few percentage, at least by 10% and uh, just scale down the entire camera frame by a few percent. And I think we don't need the keyframe on the position property of frame two, So let's delete it. Now is this the keyframe and then move on to the motion graph editor and pull the basic handle by both the sides. I would like to have more is at the start. Now let's check out the animation. So I think we can start the zoom in animation few frames earlier. So let's move the keyframes somewhere around here and also slightly speed it up. Yeah, this one is looking a lot better. But at the end, I think uh, the overall table is not properly aligned. So we can slightly shift it on the right side. That's it. Other than that, the zoom in animation looks perfect. So one more thing that we can do is uh, we can add a slight movement in this uh, in the pods and also in these plates to add a little parallax effect for the camera depth because the frames are not in 3D environment. So to add some fake camera depth, we can also add some position animation for these frames. So let's get inside frame number one 
and let's select the flat layers open the position property at keyframe and let's jump onto the next frame and here we will just uh, move the plant by a few pixels so right and and in the left and then we will use is copy copy the motion graph then go to frame number one and select these linear keyframes and click on is again do the same for these splits so let's select this and add a keyframe on the position property and just uh, move the splits apart in the right and in the left that's it and just click on is i think the pods are going to move more apart than the splits and another thing is uh, the dimension of the chair will also change so uh, let's get inside frame number two and here you can see we have a separate layer for this particular uh, chair layer so first we will convert this into a shape layer let's delete this illustration layer and let's open the shape path property and add a keyframe and now let's jump on to the next keyframe where the zoom in animation stops and add a keyframe so at the start we will just uh, blend it with the edge of this chair that's it so that it looks like it's in a single plane and when it zooms in this particular edge will expose to the camera now select this linear keyframes and click on is and also let's parent this with the chair and open the position property and add keyframe and let's add a keyframe here as well so at the start we will move the chair up a little and let's uh, paste the motion graph as well now let's check out the animation yeah this one looks good so one important thing when you are animating a zoom in or so much zoom in to any frame you have to make sure that the continuous rasterize of the frames are on or, or else uh, the frames are going to get pixelated and also inside the frames you have to make sure that uh, for the illustration layers or any other compositions the continuous rasterize is on which you can check that it's on for the layers i think uh, it's not on for these two layers let's turn it on and also it's on for this frame as well so when you are animating a zoom in animation it's very important uh, especially if you are using any illustrator or a vector file uh, then it's very important to turn on the continuous rasterize so that your illustration doesn't get pixelated so now let's move on to transition technique to match cuts so match cut is just a simple cut between two different scenes but the catch over here is you have to maintain the similar momentum uh, between the two frames during the transition so let's uh, check it out with an example first so here we have two different ships one parented with the other so let's turn off the visibility of the second ship for now and let's uh, open the position property and add a keyframe and let's open the rotation property and add a keyframe and now let's jump on to next 60 frames so in the next 22 seconds and just move it over here also let's give like 180 degree of rotation and easy is the keyframe then let's move the playhead somewhere in between around one second go to the motion graph and easy is the keyframe to add a hard spike now let's turn on the visibility so we will split the layer from this point and delete this extra layer and for the layer 2 we will just uh, trim the layer from the start till this point and also let's uh, copy the motion graph from this to set of keyframes and paste it on this linear keyframe of the position property and now just watch the magic you can see both are very different shapes with different colors but still it feels like it's the continuation of the same momentum even though the frame or maybe the shape is completely different and it's just a hard cut so that is exactly how match cut works now let's get back to our animation so here we will add a match cut where the character is tapping on the keyboard so somewhere around here so a similar kind of action is 
there in frame number 3. So let's import the frame number 3.2 here in the timeline. So let's place it over here and here I think we have added the tab. So let's get inside the frame and let's get inside the hand. We will check out the spike where we have added the spike. So somewhere around here and we will uh, just add the cut at this particular point only. So let's trim the layer from the start till this point and where is that tab and we will just add that cut in between the motion. So here exactly. Now let's check out. you can see we have just added a simple cut uh, we have just uh, maintained a proper timing between the cuts that's it so match cut is very simple like this yet it's very effective so when you have when you don't have much time to animate transition then you can think of how to add match cut to your projects because it is very effective if you can uh, implement it correctly now let's move on to transition technique 3 slide transition so from frame 3 to frame 4, we will add a slide transition. So after the typing animation with the hand, after it hits enter, we will add a slide transition. So let's start the animation from somewhere around here. Now let's bring frame 4 and place it over here above frame 3. And also we need to move the background layer from this frame let's cut it from this frame and let's paste it over here let's parent this background and also i would like to trim this layer from the start from where the frame 3 is starting so at this point we will slide in this particular frame so let's turn off the visibility of this frame for now and uh, we will open the position property and add a keyframe and after that, let's jump on to next six frames. So from 16th frame, we can jump on to next 19 second. And let's move it outside the screen in the Y axis. Then easy is the keyframe. Move on to the motion graph editor. Then pull the base handle from both the ends. I would like to give more ease at the start. Now after moving the playhead after the animation, we will parent this frame with frame number three. So don't parent the layer when the playhead is at the start of the animation or else it will uh, just get outside the screen. I mean the frame four will get outside the screen with frame number three. So now let's check out the animation. I think there can be a little bit more distance between the frames. So what we will do is just unparent it for now and I will just move it even further. All right, now let's parent this layer and now let's check out. Yeah, this one is looking even better. Now here, another thing that we can do is add a little perspective uh, for the table. So let's get inside frame four and let's turn off the visibility of all the pages and the document. Okay, now let's parent this table edge with the table and let's uh, move the anchor point and place it somewhere around here. So let's add a keyframe over here on the scale property and one keyframe at the start. So at the start, we will just scale it down in the Y axis like this. And then we will copy the motion graph from this two set of keyframes using is copy and paste it on this two set of keyframes, clicking on is. And one more thing that we can do is move the position of the chair. I mean, let's move it above a little bit to counteract uh, the camera movement. I mean, uh, to add a little bit of perspective because it is far away from the camera. So the chairs should move slower than the objects that are closer to the camera. For example, the laptop and the hand. So let's get inside the frame number three. Let's add keyframe on the position property of these chairs. And let's move on to the second one and let's add keyframes. So let's select the chairs that are far away from the camera at the furthest point and let's move it uh, above a little. And now let's select these chairs that are 
slightly near the camera and let's move it above a little. But the magnitude of position movement should vary. The chairs that are far away from the camera, the furthest point, that should uh, move more compared to the chairs that are slightly near the camera compared to that chairs. So select this linear keyframes and click on ease to paste the motion graph and let's check out the animation. Yeah, this one is looking better. And one last thing, when the transition is happening, we can add a little anticipation for the transition by rotating this laptop screen now in the Z axis. So let's uh, get inside the frame number three. And here is the web UI layer. Here is the screen mat. And here is the laptop screen. So what we will do is select both these layers and parent it with the laptop screen and convert all these three layers into a 3D layer. And then open the rotation property. So I think we need to rotate it in the X axis not in z-axis. So let's add a keyframe on the x-axis. Then move the playhead on the last frame of the animation and let's rotate it by a few degree far away from the camera. Like this, maybe minus 20 degree. And let's paste the ease. Well, uh, this rotation will not take this much time. Of course, it will happen sooner. So maybe somewhere around here or maybe we can uh, move it forward or backward by a few frames. So let's check out the animation. Yeah, this one is looking a lot better. All right, so that was all for this video. So these are the three transition techniques that you can use in any of your animation projects. So that is it. And in the next lesson, we will learn how to animate this paper flying animation from frame three to frame four. Of course, you can use this technique in lots of different ways. So that is all. I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.